Hello and welcome to this video on cross-validation in machine learning. So we took a look previously at uh, k-fold cross-validation where we split the data into say in this particular case we have about five folds and each time we done an iteration a particular fold and all the data that it consists of randomly assigned to that particular fold is taken as the test data set, while the remainder of your data is taken as the training data set. So we have a total of five iterations right there if k is equal to five. And we also saw that commonly we have values for k of five or 10, right? We do also have a value of three. Five or 10 would be prefer preferable. The issue that we run into with k fold is it doesn't quite account for imbalanced data, right? In case of our classes, particularly if we're looking for uh, the classification problems where your labels are not equally distributed, we of course take a look at certain balancing techniques, uh, including SMOT, which might be applied to the data and in the process you're able to create some synthetic samples, but oftentimes SMOT may not be the solution for us. In which case, if we are looking to account for the imbalanced data during cross validation, you'd rather go for what is called the stratified k-fold cross validation. Okay, the only difference between this and the regular idea of k-fold is each of these five folds that we have more or less contain equal number of class distributed values, right? In the sense that the, the manner in which the class is distributed in one, you'd have the same manner of class distribution, right? Say if we're talking about a binary class, say let's say class zero and class one, now the proportion of class zero to class one would be quite steady when you go from one to two, two to three, all the way up to five, such that every time you have an iteration with one of these strata held out as a test data, your training is done in such a manner that it learns, it's not different from the training that is done for the other iterations, right? And even when you talk about your test data and your training data, the distribution of the classes are quite balanced. That's the stratified k-fold. And uh, we can give this as CV is equal to stratified stratified k-fold with the number of splits specified. By default, this would be five. If we want less or more, we can do that. And this CV value can then be passed on in our grid search CV or randomized search CV. Right? Another method that we could be using is the repeated stratified k-fold. This is known as one of the more robust cross-validation methods during hyperparameter tuning. So what this is doing is, so far we've had only folds where your data are quite fixed onto each class. Or rather, sorry, my apologies there. We're talking about each different stratum here has been assigned certain data which remain with that stratum, whether it is being used as the uh, testing data or training data. The shuffling doesn't quite happen in, in the sense that you have allotted them in your first round of randomized allotting, and it stays that way throughout the five iterations. However, if we have the repeated stratified k-fold, we're suddenly talking about having another parameter 
it would be the stratified k fold. One, it would include the number of splits, let's say we have five, and it would also include the number of repetitions. Let's say we provide 10, then we're talking about each iteration being repeated about 10 times, in which case we have a, increased the total number of iterations by that many times, but every single time this is being done, a new set of random values are allotted to your stratum. So this kind of ensures that there is sufficient amount of stochastic element being introduced into your hyperparameter tuning. So those are few of the ways uh, seen as more effective than our regular cross-validation techniques. In repeated stratified k-fold, we just have to be a touch careful if we are using randomized search CV instead of grid search CV, that we need to specify the random state, right? Otherwise, the, uh, the number of iterations and the number of allotment for random values just keeps increasing there. So some degree of steadiness is required by allotting a random state over there. 